Okay, hello and welcome back. It's been a while, but we are back. And I, as promised, if you watched the status video that I released a few weeks back, I said the next game was going to be The Wars of Marcus Aurelius, and it is. This is by Hollenspiel. And Hollenspiel, if you're watching this video, I'm eagerly awaiting the release of Horse and Musket Volume 4. <laughs> Maybe that'll be out by the time you see this video. I don't know, uh, but you can bet I'm going to get that as soon as it comes out. Awesome series. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but this is a solitaire game from Holland Spiel. It is The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. I've played this game a couple of times already, and it is not an easy game. It is a hard game to play, hard game to beat. I have not won yet. <laughs> I think I've played... How many games have I played? I want to say I've played probably five or six. And the last time I played was interesting because, and I'll talk a little bit about how this works before we actually start start playing. Um, but I, I was doing pretty good, I thought. And, but except my Imperium level was down to two. My Imperium points were down to two. And I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll take care of that next turn maybe. Uh, I don't think it's that big a deal. Well, no, it was a huge deal because uh, one of the cards I drew uh, caused me to lower my Imperium points by two. And when you do that, it's game over. <laughs> so in, in an instant, the game was over. And this game can be brutal like that. But that's what makes it fun. And uh, I will talk a little bit about that, uh, why I like this game so much, um, maybe after we go through the playthrough here real quick. So we will jump right into it. I will do a quick explanation of how to win, but uh, we'll pretty much jump into it. Well, before we do that, I have added a couple of things that do not come with the game. I put a little blue cube in uh, 17, 17, uh, 175 um, CE, because that this is a reminder to me that when we reach 175 CE, we go into the late war period and we will add these cards to the deck. So the green cards are the barbarian decks, Red cards are the Roman decks. Those are my decks, Marcus Aurelius's decks. So how do you win or how do you lose the Wars of Marcus Aurelius? There are three areas on the map and you have three barbarian tribes. You have the Marcomani, you have the Quadi, and you have the Ayaziges. And they are working their way down the map towards these three boxes at, at the bottom of their territories. And if you look, if the Marco Mani managed to come all the way down into Rome, you lose the game. So that's another way to lose the game quickly, in addition to the one I told you about. If you, if you lose your Imperium points, you get usurped and you lose the game that way. The Quadi, if they come down, they will raid uh, into Pannonia here, and that will cause you to lose one of these Imperial po Imperium points. And you don't want to do that. You want your Imperium points to be as high as you can get. In fact, if you get up to seven, you'll get an extra card in your hand. What else? Uh, let's see. So it, basically, we're trying to hang on. We want. We really want to pacify these barbarians if we can. There's ways of doing that, and it's well. The way to do it is to get them is to push them back up into their home territory and defeat them there, and that will cause them to surrender and. Uh, for the most part, take them out of the game. There are ways they can come back in though, so you have to be aware of that. Uh, it is a card-driven game. We will have our, uh, we will draw our cards. And we'll make decisions based upon what we draw. I will show you that once we start. Uh, we will use dice to resolve battles. We'll use two d6s to resolve battles. I have some d10s here just to kind of help me keep track of strength points. I guess you'll call them. We'll, we'll talk about that when we have a battle. But you'll get a number, and then you're you're trying to roll. A specific number to win a battle. Like I said, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, what else? I've got just some counters I'll be using in the game kind of off to the side here. I've made my own little player's aid sheet here. Uh, basically, it's a reminder to me what I can do with when I draw a card. It's my turn. You can use cards to play for the event, or you can take an action with the card. So this kind of tells me, reminds me what those things are. And some housekeeping stuff once we get into, uh, once you go through a complete turn, you'll go through a housekeeping phase. And I'll explain that as we go through it. And so per the manual, when you set the game up, one of the things you do, you will be given 10 legions. And you, you're allowed to set these legions up in any of these three areas that you want. Remember, any, those are the barbarian areas where these barbarians are coming down. You get 10 and you get two leaders and, you, and leaders must go with the legions. They cannot be alone in, a, uh, in one of these boxes. They have to be with 
with a, a, at least one legion. So what I've done in my playthroughs is I've kind of, to me, the most important thing is really this Marcomani tribe is very dangerous. Like I said, if they get down to Rome, you lose the game. I think this is probably the riskiest, <laughs> the most dangerous uh, side of the map to worry about. Uh, the Quadi, you'll notice they have a Quadi cannot attack marker. They cannot do anything until they're, they come active. They'll be activated through a card draw. That'll come off and then they can start moving. So it's almost like Rome has a truce with them now and they really can't do much. They'll get down here and what they will do is cause you to lose one of these Imperium points if they manage to raid into Pannonia. And the... Uh, Iazigis, if they come down, they'll do a raid also. They will cause you not only to lose one of your Imperium points, but you'll have to discard one of the cards from your hand, and that's very painful. So, in my mind, this is the most dangerous tribe, the Marcomani. The uh, Iazigis are probably the second most troublesome, and then the Quadi are probably third. May not be, I don't know, each game is going to play out differently. It just depends on what cards come out and how these tribes move. I'll also point out that for the Quadi and the Marcomani, if they get south of the, of the Danube River, you'll start losing Imperium points that way as well. So you want to keep these two tribes above uh, the Danube for sure. You do not want to lose Imperium points. Fast way to lose the game. Um, and then over here, I've got another little red cube. You're allowed to carry cards over in this Meditation 1 space. So if I have a card that I think I want to use in a, in a uh, following round or year or i guess it's round it won't be a year if i have a card i want to save it'll go into this meditation area there's there's a card that'll that'll get me a second meditation area so i could actually hold on to two cards if i wanted to i think that is it for just the quick overview the one last thing well two last things maybe more the legions are pretty much stuck where they are right now so in order to move legions from the, the say, the Marco Mani area over into the Quadi area, I would have to build a, an upper Danube fleet. And if I wanted to go even further, all the way across the board, I would have to also have a lower Danube fleet. So that, that, these are going to allow me to move legions and leaders to the different areas. There's, there's another way to do that, and it's through burning some cards. You can transfer your legions. You can also do it, I think it's at the end of... It's at the beginning of a turn, I think, you get, you get the opportunity to reshuffle your troops, if you will. And there, there's a chance they could be on these off-map conflicts, which we'll also get into, even though I hope we don't. Because <laughs> I do not like the off-map conflicts. These are also very bad to get into. All right, so let's just jump in. Uh, I think we... It's, it's it, One of the things I like about this game, the rules are not difficult. Very straightforward game. It is one of the best written rule books that I've seen. It's not without errors. There's maybe a couple of errors that I've come across, but for the most part, the rules are really, really well written. It's a very um, small, short rule book. I think there's, let's see, there are seven pages roughly of rules. Uh, it's a big print, as you saw in the unboxing I did. Few rules, well written, easy to understand, and very easy to get into. So with all of that said, let's do just that. Let's get into this. Let's start a game. And I will pull up the sequence of play, and I'll show you this real quick. Let's see if we can zoom in here. So the sequence of play, you have this review deployment step comes first. That's where you shuffle your troops around like I was talking about. You'll go through a spring, summer, and winter round, and that's a, that'll complete a turn. We start off in the, I think this is the spring round, and as we as we go back and forth with our with our, our sub turns, I guess they're called, where the Romans will go, then the barbarians will go. You'll advance to summer, then to winter, and once that's over, you end the turn. You go into housekeeping. I'll show you that as it happens. Another thing to note is that as we advance to summer and winter, the number of cards we draw for our hand will decrease. We st we'll start with five cards in the spring. We'll get three in the summer, and we'll only get. Uh, one card in the winter, so it gets harder and harder as we as we go along into the season. All right, so anyway, the first step in the sequence of play is that redeploy step. And so 
This is where we assign leaders and uh, redeploy our forces. So for this first turn, this is the first turn of the game. Before you, before you actually get to the sequence of play, the, the game setup tells you to go ahead and deploy your legions and leaders where you want them. So that's already been done here. And like I said, I, I've got them kind of deployed where I think they need to be. And, I, and this is how I usually deploy them. I've got five uh, in the Marcomani area, and I've got five more in the uh, Ayazigis area. And so that's how I like to set it up. I'm not saying that's right. Sometimes I might put six over here, just because, like I said, this one is so important, I think, to stop. I really kind of wish I'd put six over here. <laughs> because, uh, I, really, I really think this is the most dangerous area. But we're going to go five and five and see what happens. Marco Aurelius is here, and you can see that his his uh, leadership rating is a three. Uh, he can become demoralized. You flip them when they become demoralized, but for now he's a three. Pompanius is a one. He's not nearly as good a leader as uh, Marcus is, so he's over here with the ISEG's troops. So uh, the redeployment phase, like I said, that's been done, so we're not going to do that here. That was part of setup. Uh, it also says... If you're in turn 175, that's when you add these late war cards into the deck. And that's just some extra events and things that will happen later in the, uh, the following years that we get to. Okay, so we are in the first turn of the, sp of the spring round. And so this turn, it'll also tell you that, let's see if I can show you that too, the barbarian phase is skipped for this very first turn. So they will not get a a round. They won't get a turn, a sub-turn, I guess it is. It kind of terminology is a little confusing. Uh, so they will not get to go in the spring round. They will get to go in the summer and winter rounds, though. So that will be skipped for the first turn. So what that means is where they would normally draw their cards and go, they're not going to. So we're going to draw five cards as per the instructions, the rules. So I'm going to draw five. And let's see, where am I going to put these? Let's just draw them. I'll put them down here face it. Well, let's see. That's kind of off the board. Let's see if I can do some moving around here. We'll put them over here. So there's one. I don't think this is going to work. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I really don't want to cover up the meditation space because I'm hoping to get to use that even though I've never done that in the game before so here's our five cards we then the cards the decks have been shuffled uh, I don't know what's coming up we could get anything so uh, briefly about the cards a card can be played for the event on the card or you can take an action with the card so there are cards that are strictly this is just an action card so this is as action Roman turn just use this to take one of these actions that I talked about. You can use it to attack or to um, place forts, those kinds of things. So right off, I can see that I'm probably going to want to spend that action card on something. And my intent is to push back the Marco Mani. I want to try to get them back to their home territory and hopefully eliminate them. Same with the um, Ayazigis. What else have we got? Return of captives. So for each surrendered tribe, deploy one army. This probably isn't going to do us any good. This I may just use this as an action card as well. Um, this one is Roman turn. And this tells you when to play them. So it, there may be something that'll tell you during the Barbarian draw, you can take an action. And that's where you'd want to hold on to the card in your meditation space. But this one says, let's see, um, Imperium points plus two or mutiny. If you use this card to end... Let's see, have I even pulled this one before? If you use this card to end the Legion's Demand Mutiny, so this, is, this has to do with the, um, to end a mutiny, and I, we don't have a mutiny yet either, so uh, this is probably going to be an action card too. Place the truth, Truce Marker on one Barbarian army that is north of the Danube. So I can place a Truce Marker on any of these well, in this case, I can't do it to the Quadi because they they have the cannot attack marker on them, so they're out of it. But I can put this on the Marcomani or the um, Ayazigis. And what that will do is I'll, I'll it would put one of these truce tokens on their counter, and that army would not be able to move for the rest of the year. So, And you cannot attack it. Its cards are still added to the search pile, though. And we'll get into the search pile as we play. But basically, as Barbarian tribes take actions 
uh, you'll discard those action cards to the search pile. If you get a third card, all other tribes will move. So it's kind of bad news. But I think I'm going to play this one because this I can use this to have a temporary truce with the ISZGs, and that'll hold them here for now. And that'll kind of free up... I can kind of focus on the Markomani at least this first entire turn. And like the card says, the only problem with that is I, if I do that, then I can't attack. And I could, in fact, try to attack them and push them back up as well. Uh, you know what? Let's let's play this one, and I'm going to have... Let's see. Let's do this. We'll put the discard pile to the right of the uh, Roman box. So here's our discard pile. I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to put I, I'm going to put the truce marker on the Iazigis, and so that's going to take them out of this first turn entirely. I can't attack them, but they're not going to move. What else? This is Imperium points plus two or draw two new cards hmm well, this is interesting because i can also take and i could have done that with the um this komodos card i could have also uh, used it for plus two imperial points and and if you do it says here if you do um if you play it for either event discard to the history pile and the history pile is not the discard pile it's off the board so once i play this card if I take those plus two Imperial Imperium points, then later I would not be able to use it to draw two new cards and increase my hand size. I could do that now, actually. I can increase my hand size. I could draw two more cards right now. Hmm, I haven't had this one this early. <laughs> and I'm him in here and all I'm because it would be nice to have my Imperium points go up to six, but then again, it would also be nice to pull two more cards and possibly take a couple more actions to maybe even take the Marco Mani out of it this first turn. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to. I'm also. I'm going to. I'm going to burn this card to the history pile and draw two more cards. And yeah, let's do that. So let's let's make our history pile up here. Uh, let's put it over here. We'll turn it sideways so now those cards are out of the game, and that gets me two more cards. So I'm going to draw one. Two, and we get another action card, which I'm not too thrilled with. And, and here's one I had mentioned earlier. After the Barbarian card draw, cancel the effect of current Barbarian cards except an off-map conflict. So I could use this to cancel uh, a card that they may draw in their turn. Uh, do not draw any more Barbarian cards this round. Hmm, so... Well, that's not really what I wanted. I wanted something to help me a little bit more, but... We will take it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my action cards and I am going to attack. Well, no, I'm not either. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take an action card. And one of the things you can do with an action card is you can add two level one forts or you can flip one level one fort to a level two. And the way forts are going to work is you will place forts. You can place them anywhere you want to in, a, in one of these uh, barbarian tribe regions north of the Danube. So, but you have to remember that when you go into the housekeeping round, you must have a line extending from the Danube up to, they're, they're chained in other words. So if I had a fort in, let's say this plus seven area, if I wanted it to stay on the board and not disappear, it's going to have to have a supply chain going all the way back down to this plus two Danube area. So we'll, we'll, you'll see this better as we go along. I'm not explaining it too clearly, but you'll see it. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to spend this action card to place two level one forts. And the level, so if you look, there's there's a level one fort is a plus one to your attack and a zero pacify. And the level two fort is a plus two to your attack and a plus one pacification. We'll get into pacification uh, a little bit later on. That's basically when we have surrendered tribes trying to get back into the game. And forts are good in that they do increase your attack value. They also will stop the movement of barbarian tribes. Uh, as they stop movement, they will take a hit. So if you're at a plus two and you stop movement, you'll flip to a one. If you're at a one and you stop movement, you eliminate the fort. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place two level one forts. I'm going to put one in the plus two Marcomani region and one in the plus four Marcomani region. 
And then I'm going to take another action card and attack. And so the way that works is when you have a battle, you will add up your the number of your legions, and I have five, and they're worth each worth one point. So you'll take you'll count your legions, you'll add in your leader value. So here it's a three. So we're up to uh, eight. So we have five plus three is eight, and then any forts you'll add that in. So we've got another plus one for the plus one fort or the one level one fort. I'm at nine, and so I'm going to take the red d10 and show that we have nine points. That is our um, attack value. And then you look at the barbarians and you add their the barbarian value, which here is a four. It can be you can demoralize these. They can go down to a two, but it's a four right now. So it's four, it's that number plus the territory they're in number. So it's plus two just north of the Danube. So there it's six. And I will show that with this blue D10. And so then you're going to roll a D6 for the Romans and a D6 for the Barbarians. And whatever you add the, your roll to the numbers that we just came up with, the higher number wins. If it's a tie, you roll again. You keep rolling until there is no tie and somebody wins, somebody loses. If you roll a six or a one, that has special meaning. And I believe if you are the barbarians, if you roll, let's we'll just go find that page where we talk about battles. Rolling a six or a one. So the barbarians, if they roll a one, they get flipped to demoralize. If they roll a six, they get flipped to their bold side, depending on what, you know, if they're already bold, nothing would happen. So if the Romans roll a one, then you would lose an Imperium point. If we roll a six, then we would increase the um, Imperium points for the Romans. What else? I think that's it. So let's do it. We're going to fight this battle. And if we succeed, it will push the Marcomanni back up one territory. So that would push them up into the plus four territory. So let's see what we get here. Five and a four, so that's 13. So it's, yeah, nine plus four is 13 for the Romans. And it's six plus five is 11. So the Romans win. Marco Aurelius wins this battle. No sixes or ones are rolled. It'll simply just push this tribe back to the plus four space. And let's see, so that was that. And that was that action. And I still have three cards and I am tempted to, I'm tempted to put down two more forts here and here. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna play these for the actions. I don't, I'm not gonna take any of the, um, I'm not going to take any of the uh, events. Though, like I said, it is tempting to get my Imperium points up because that you want this to be high. <laughs> you don't want that to go down. I could place two more forts, which would help me with the attack. Again, I'm trying to get them back. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's take another card. We will spend it to place two more level one forts. So I'm going to put one here and one in their home region. So now I've got, starting from the Danube, I've got a chain of forts going all the way back up. So that when we do get into the housekeeping phase, I don't have to worry about removing forts that are out of supply. Let's, let's attack again. So I'm gonna attack again. So again, I still have three plus five is eight. There's a fourth there, so I still have my nine. The Marcomanni, now that they're clo getting closer to their home territory, they fight a little better. So the closer they get to home, the better they fight. So now, instead of six, they're up to eight. And again, we're going to roll, and whoever gets the higher wins. I should also point out that once you roll, you can burn a card to add one to your roll. But I didn't have to do that last time, I, and it's it can change a battle. We'll see if we need to do that. Okay, so... The Barbarians roll a 1, and I roll a 5, so I'll win again, because we have higher than the Barbarians, so that's going to that's gonna push them back, and because they rolled a 1, it flips them to their demoralized side. 
that's actually very good news for me. I've got one more card left. You know, again, you can I could hold this if I wanted to. I can actually hold it in your hand. You're allowed to hold, I think it's five cards in your hand. And at the end of the round, I think it's I think it's the end. Let's double check it. I think it's the end of the round. Um, it's your you're you're held to that five card limit. Yeah, so you can play no cards your turn. You can hold them in your hand. You must discard down to five cards at the end of a round. So we could get to the end of the round, we could still have five cards. So in this case, I could just hold this and we could go rattle right into the next turn. Or I can use it to take an action. So I'm tempted to attack again. Like I said, I really want to knock the Marco Mani out if I can. Another thing I'm tempted to do is build two level one forts here. Because I know that the Ayazigis are going to come, they're going to work their way south eventually. That truce card will come off after the first turn. But I think I'm going to again attack the Marco Mani. I, this is kind of rare for me to have them in this bad of a position this early. So they are still going to get the eight because they're now, even though they're demoralized at two, they are heading six to that number now. So they're at eight. I'm still at nine because I still have the eight plus the one. And that's why you want to build those forts. So I'm still at nine. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Snake eye. <laughs> so, so that's not going to do anything to the... Well, I won the battle, first of all, because it's uh, 10 against nine. So I won. It is going to push them back up. They're already demoralized, so it's not going to do anything to them. However, because I rolled the one, I'm going to lose an Imperium point. So now I'm down to three. And it may not sound terrible, but it is. Trust me, I don't want to be on three. So that's not good. The good news is, though, we have pushed them back up into their home territory. And if we can defeat them in their home territory, they'll surrender. So that's actually excellent. An excellent position to be in for me. Okay, so that's it. I played my hand. My turn's over. And we go now to the summer round. So this is where the barbarians will start moving and, and taking action. So you move the round marker to summer to show that you're in a summer round. And the barbarians, and if we go back to the um, sequence of play, you can see that the summer round now, the Barbarian phase is first, the Roman phase goes after that, and like I said, we'll draw three cards in that, in this phase, this round. So let's start with the Barbarians though. And the way I do this is I go ahead and draw three cards. I do not look at them. I put them in the draw pile because there are, there are certain card events that will say, do not play those other two cards, go back into the, into their uh, deck. So I don't really want to see all the cards. So we'll, we'll draw the three that they get, and we'll start pulling and resolving. So the first card is Costa Bochi. I don't know how to say that, but it says lose one Imperium point per year until resolved. Place this card in the Eastern. Yeah, so this is the um, this is the one I didn't want to see. <laughs> and so basically, this is saying we have a conflict in the Eastern Empire that we have to deal with, and. I'm just reading forward here. It just says if, if there was already a card out, then you would reshuffle it back into the deck. You don't, in this case, because it's not. So it does get played. Once it's played and resolved, though, it will become history. It will be taken off the board. This is not good for me, though, because like, like it says, I'll lose one Imperium point every year that this card remains out. So that is not good. And like you can see how easy it is to lose Imperium points. And if we hit Usurp, it's game over. That's not good. All right, so this gets placed here, does not go into the surge pile. So let's pull the second card. And it is another event. Barbarians siege forts. Roll 1d6 for each fort on a map. If the number is lower than the terrain rating, the fort takes one hit. So this is not good for us either. Because I don't guess any of the barbarian cards are going to be good for us. So, and the only place we have forts are in the Marcomani territory. So we will start here, and we are looking to roll higher than a two here. So 
And we do, so this fort is okay. And now we're looking to roll higher than a four, and we don't. So this one takes a hit. Now, unfortunately, the hit means it's a level one fort, so a hit's going to remove it. That's bad news for me. Now we're looking to roll higher than a, well, we can't roll higher than a six. So, well, yeah, I guess we can roll, because if we get a six, it stays. It says lower than it value and it doesn't matter so this gets removed <laughs> this gets removed i can't roll yeah i can't roll um higher than that so that is that so that's not good because now this is it it's i don't get the plus one when i attack up here the good news is though this card goes into the discard pile and not the surge pile and we're going to put those cards over here so this is their discard pile and they get one more because they drew three. And they do draw three every every round, spring, summer, and winter. And this is an unfortunate one to draw now. It's quiet on the Danube. And this basically says, do not draw any more barbarian cards this round. Well, it was the end of the round anyway. <laughs> that would have been nice to, to come up first. So the, the barbarians drew their three cards. They took their turn. Then it comes back to me. And I only get three cards this turn because we're in the summer round. So let's draw our three cards. So one, two, and three. All right, so what do we have? Battle before dice roll. So we can use this card to automatically win the battle you are fighting. Do not roll. And gain plus one Imperium point, Danube front only. This event may not be used in an enemy home space. So unfortunately, I cannot use this card to attack the Marco Mani. So that, that kind of sucks. And then the Goddess of... Uh, Fortuna, reshuffle the Roman deck. Eh, that's not that exciting. Seize the initiative. Discard this to make two attacks on one front. You must make both attacks regardless of the outcome. So I think what I'm going to do, I am going to take an action with this reshuffle card, discard it. So my action is to build two forts again. I'm going to put one in the home territory and then one in the plus four territory because i really want that plus one to my attack and i am going to attack i'm going to attack him right now and i'm going to attack him with the seize the initiative card and this will let me make two attacks and hopefully i'll be successful so let's see so now they're in their home territory and they are demoralized, but their home territory is a plus eight, plus their two. That's going to put them at ten, which is not good. And then I am I'm still at eight, plus one is nine, so I'm at a disadvantage here. This is risky. And I do get two attacks because this is the Seize the Initiative card. So let's do the first attack. And that is, they get twelve, I get twelve, so that's a tie. And anytime you tie, you roll again because there are no ties. And so this time they win because I've got, I rolled 12 again, but they rolled 13, so I lose. Those are threes, I lose. That means, let's go back to the battle page. I've forgotten precisely. Um, when you're losing, um, if the Barbarians win the battle, the Romans lose one legion, move it to the recovery box. And that's what I was trying to remember. I knew I had to do something, so that's not good. There, there's this recovery box, and you can already see there's two legions in the recovery box. And what happens is any legion in the recovery box must stay there until the beginning of the next turn. So that's going to take this legion out. If you have a fort in the same space as... Oh, well... Okay, never mind. <laughs> on. So what this is saying is if you have a fort, you can remove the fort to absorb that loss. So let's definitely do that. Let's take the fort away instead. You remove any level one fort or flip a level two to a level one. So yeah, that, let's do that. Let's keep the legion out because we're probably going to need it. And, and, and so that is all that happens because of our loss. The barbarians won, so... I don't think they get to recover. They don't. It's just that we lost our fort. And so because this card says I must make the second attack, I've got to do the second attack. So 
What that means now is I am at 8 because I don't have the Ford anymore. And they're still at 10, so it's even worse for me. So we want them to roll low, but we want to roll high. And they roll high and we roll high, but <laughs> that's not good because uh, we lose again. Uh, and we don't have a fort this time, so we do have to take the loss of a legion. After all. It's also bad because they rolled a 6, and when they roll a 6, it flips them to their stronger side. So now they're they're really angry and that's not good. And this isn't good either because I really wanted to take the mark of money out and I didn't do it. In fact, I, I've got wounded because of it. This goes into the discard pile. I still have a card left. And I think I want to hang on to this card for now. I don't think I want to... I don't think I want to get rid of it. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to hold on to this card. So that's going to end... That's going to end the summer round. So uh, still no housekeeping yet. We're just going through the spring, summer, winter round. So this will take us into the winter. Now, when you're in winter, not only will we draw only one card for our hand, we will fight battles at a minus one. So we don't fight as well in the winter. And it says here on the map, Roman battle minus one. So we're at a disadvantage in the winter when we fight. So it will go back now to the Barbarians, and they still get to draw three cards. So one, two, three, and we will resolve those cards. So starting with the first one. And so here we go, the ISZG. So this is an ISZG action card. It will come into the search pile. And it says advance uh, the tribes forward one space or flipped from demoralized to bold. And it tells you to add it to the surge, the surge pile. What it will do is it will, it will take the, um, wait a minute, does it take the truce marker off or does that stay on? I think that stays on. I think I forgot we had the truce marker out there. And so, yeah, it's the, they have a temporary truce marker. So the surge does not cause them to advance. So they're going to sit there. But the card does stay in the surge pile. So two more cards and it will cause a surge. So let's let's go ahead and get the second card out and see what happens. It is the Aya ZGs again. So they're not going to move because we saw the truce, but it adds to the surge pile. And this third card is a plague. Lose. Well, this isn't going to go in the surge pile. But it says to lose one IP. Uh, maximum of no matter how many play cards are drawn this round, roll 1d6. Okay, so first things first, we're going to lose another Imperium point. Now, this, we're in dangerous territory now. When you're down to two, the game can end very suddenly if you pull the wrong card. Okay, so we, we lose one IP, and we're going to roll 1d6. If you roll a one, place two legions from any army of your choice in the recovery box. Well, this isn't good. <laughs> so... On any other roll, just place one. So somebody's going to, hopefully just one is going into the recovery box. And we roll a five, so it's just one. Well, this is not good at all. I'm going to take one of these from Pompanius. I guess the only good news is we're um, rapidly approaching the end of the turn, and we'll get, get these troops back out. And if this event is played, discard to the history pile. So at least that's out of the game now and that will do it for the plague card so the play card goes back into the discard pile we didn't get a surge all right so that was the barbarians now i go i draw one card only because it is the winter round and we get the single combat battle before dice roll um, so resolve this battle by rolling 1d6 for each side. Yeah, so this one you don't count up numbers, you just, it's just a straight roll of the d6s. And um, it just kind of changes how you do combat. Uh, you can also gain the leader Marcus Maximinius for free. Discard his card, just goes to the history pile. So, hmm. So, okay, now this is... <laughs> This is really interesting. So I only have the one card. So what's happening here is I if 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 I 
If I chose to battle the Markamani again in their home territory, I could roll d6 against d6, nothing else in play, even odds. If I win, that would cause the Markomani to surrender because it's a victory for me. And plus, on top of that, I would gain uh, another leader. I would gain a rather strong leader, the second strongest leader in the game. This uh, Maxi Manius would come out. So that would be also awesome. And then this would go into the history pile. But if I lose, if the Barbarians win, it would cause me to lose two IP. Well, you can see that if I lose two IP, I'm going to lose the game. So everything in this game would be riding on, would be riding on how, how I do with the um, the die roll. Uh. <laughs> and it's the winter. Um, do I feel lucky? Is the question. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. This is crazy. Uh, I, I really want to stop the Marco Mani from advancing. I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna roll. I've got to get higher. I'm I'm white. The barbarians are still blue. I've got to roll higher, and remember, ties aren't going to cut it. You roll till somebody wins. So, let's see what we get. It's all or nothing, <laughs> and that's awesome. I won. Six to one. So, that is going to, that, let's, let's make sure we do this right, because this doesn't happen too often for me. Well, so first of all, we did roll a one, so... We're going to lose another Imperium point, but just one. So let's do that. We're down to one. And now we're in really dangerous... Well, wait, what am I doing? No, yeah, it was us. No, wait, we rolled a six. What am I doing? We were at two. We won. Yeah. I'm getting confused here. I'm thinking we're blue. We're, we, we're, we actually get a six. We actually get one Imperium point back. Which is what we wanted. Um, they would get demoralized but since they're surrendering that's not an issue so if you defeat a barbarian army in its home space the tribe surrenders move its counter to the surrender tribe blocked and gain an ip if all three tribes have surrendered that's when we win but that's not happening so we get one ip for rolling a six and the fact that they're surrendering will give us another one so we're going to put them in the surrendered area this is now back up to four this leader comes out now, this, this level 2 leader is going to come out, and now where can I place him is the question. Because I believe you can only have one leader at a time, and they can't go into a space without a legion, so let's see what that means for um, where to place this guy. Um, okay, so yeah, he goes into the... Uh, this recovery box. We can't put him out yet because we, we don't have a place for him to go. So that's just going to go into this overpopulated recovery box. And I think we are good. So then this gets, this gets, this is a history card now. So that basically gets burned. And that is our turn. And that is the end of the winter phase. And that takes us to this housekeeping phase. So, uh, so, and looking at my um, player's aid card here, first thing we do is the fort attrition check, and we remove forts that are out of supply. So, basically, what you're doing here is you're rolling one uh, d six, and let's go to the housekeeping section here real quick, uh, which is ten in the rule book. And like I said, it's easy to find things in the rule book. Um, so you're rolling a d6, and on a roll of six, uh, you will take a hit on the fort. So if it's a one, you'll, you'll remove it, a two will get reduced. I only have two, so we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Because if, you, if, if this fort is eliminated by default, this one will get eliminated in the next step, where we'll remove out of supply forts. So we'll roll, hope we don't get a six. And we do get a six. <laughs> so. That's going to remove this level one fort, and then you go to the your uh, uh, is it in supply check? Our fort's in supply, and to be in supply, you must be able to trace down to the Danube, and this one cannot do that because we just removed that one, so this comes out as well. 
The reason that's not good is because we want to pacify this area now that the Marcomanni have surrendered. And the way to do that is through uh, pacification points. We can, if, if we had forts in place, we could pretty much guarantee that they would never come back out, back out again because they would not be able to roll higher than what we had uh, in pacification value in their territory. As long as those forts are there and don't get eliminated, that is. So that's it for the fort check. Then we come down to remove truce markers. So that's going to take the Iazigi's truce marker away. They'll become active. Flip Marcus, or at least a bold, he's already bold. Discard any cards. We don't have any to discard. Uh, lose one IP per off map conflict. Now that is going to happen because we do have the Eastern Empire uh, in conflict. We need to resolve that. So that's going to bring this down to three. And then lose one IP per tribe south of the Danube. They're all north still. And then you advance the year marker by one. So we're now in 171 CE, and it's back to springtime. Oh, and so we are at the beginning of the turn. So this is where you redeploy. Leaders are assigned and legions deployed. So these legions can now come out of the recovery box, and this leader can come out. So what I'm going to do is... And really, it's it's not just a matter they can come out, but I can I can redeploy the troops any way I want to now. And so what I'm going to do is just reshuffle these, and I'm going to take we're going to take Maxi Mianis and put him in the Quadi territory, and I'm going to take. Marcus Aurelius and the only thing I don't think is I don't think I can put anybody in the off map area. Let's check that out real quick and see. Um, you move your leaders and legions from any army box off map conflict space and recovery box to any other. So I can. I can actually now move legions to try to. stop this conflict and I believe that so it's a five looks like five is the number I'm trying to beat and the only bad thing about that is if, if I put units over here it takes them away from the main board here where all the action is taking place and I kind of hate that I'm just looking here it's a battle to make sure that it's I think it's I think it is the five and it is so and I could just put I don't have to put a leader over here I could just put legions over here let's go ahead and get these oops let's go ahead and get these down so I don't forget to move them I do think I want to put I'm going to leave. I do want Marcus, Marcus Aurelius in the IZG's area. I want to do the same thing that I just did the Marcomani if possible. And I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him six legions. Should have noted earlier that these legion markers, I'm using one side, has the, um, the names of the legion. It means nothing. It's more thematical than anything. The other side, if you wanted to, it's, it's your choice. You could actually play with little pictures of legions. So we could use something like that instead. I just kind of like the, the text version. A little more historical flavor from my perspective. So what to do? Let me just think about this. I could put... And they're not active yet. That's not to say they won't become active. What if I did something like this? That would give us four. 
We could even do something like this so that it's five. It would be one, two, three, four, five against five. And I think, because I can't stand to lose the, I can't take the one Imperium point per turn. That's that's too hard to take. So that's what we'll do. I think we're going to go with that. I think I'm going to have, I hate to do it, but I'm going to have Pompanius go to the Eastern Empire and try to, quell this whatever's going on. We'll have Marcus Aurelius stay in the IZGs. And you know, before I do that though, actually I think let's do this. I'm going to switch these leaders because that'll give us an extra attack point here. And it's only three here, but I don't think the Quadi are going to I hope they're not. I don't think they're going to get that far this turn. It's a gamble, but we'll see. All right, so that's how I'm going to, that is how I'm going to deploy my forces. That's the redeployment step. And now we go to the spring round. So we're in the spring round. The barbarians get their three cards. One, two, three. So we're awfully close to a surge here too. And, well, see, this isn't good. This is the um, Ayazigi's Cavalry card. And so what happens is they'll activate twice, advance them for two spaces, or flip them from demoralized to bold. Well, they're already bold, so they're going to go two spaces. They're going to go one, two. And that unfortunately counts... Uh, that, that, that counts as a um, surge card. So that's going to go into the surge pile. If I had a card in my hand, and in the meditation at this point, because we're entering a new turn, I could burn it to stop that, but I, I don't have any cards, so it, it has to happen. What that means is that activates all the other tribes. So for the Quadi, what that means is it, it takes this cannot attack marker off. And I don't think they move. I think it just takes the marker off. When the first quad activation occurs, remove the cannot attack marker and advance. So I guess they do. So that comes off and they do come down to the plus seven space. Now for the Marco Mani, I think we get into what's called an Oathbreaker check. I think, because remember, they've surrendered. And I think, do they get to do an Oathbreaker check? If any tribes have surrendered and a surge... Or Oathbreaker event card. We didn't pull the card, but we do have a surge. We have to roll to determine if they rejoin. So this isn't good. So we're going to roll. It's the number of legions. And this is what sucks about having these legions off fighting this other conflict. I really needed them here for this pacification value. Um, so we're going to roll a d6. Compare the number to the number of legions in the army box. And here we have none. So it's zero. There's no leaders. Plus the number of level two force, there's none. <laughs> so our pacification value is zero. If the die roll is greater than the pacification value, they break their treaty and resume their offensive. Remove the tribe's marker from the surrender tribe box and place it in its... See, this isn't good. So basically it's saying the Marcomani are back out. They come to their home place, they're bold, and they are reactivated. That was terrible news. And that's why surges are bad. So when you have a surge, it 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 it, it, it um, basically the other two tribes that weren't taking their action get to move. They did. These cards come out and go back into the discard pile, though. So it's reset the surge, the surge deck, if you will. So we pull another one. It's the Quadi again. Um, advance the Quadi forward one space, or flip it from demoralized to bold. Well, they're not. And it goes into the surge space, so, so it will go here. So basically, they're going to advance another space. They're now in the plus four space. And it's, it's saying here, secret aid, if they're under temporary truce or have surrendered, but it's that, that's not the case here, so we don't worry about that. And we pull this last card. Morale collapses. All demoralized barbarian armies immediately retreat one space towards their home space. Well, no one is demoralized. And so this goes into the discard pile. And now we draw cards because we're in the spring. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, and five. So let's see what we have here. So we can pay one IP to add this Pertinax leader to any. Oh, okay, so basically we can we can move them to anywhere where there's not a leader, but everybody has a leader, so we can't do that. So I really can't use that for its event. Uh, this is another play card. Forced March. Discard this card to move up to six legions and one leader from any um, Danube front to one off. So basically, this is where I would be able to move. And I really now wish I had left some people here because I could use this card to move them back into this off-map conflict. So that, that kind of sucks. So this does us no good either. This is an add another Legion card. So if I play this for the event, I can add this... Um, what is it? This uh, Prima Genia Legion to the game. Uh, and we might want to do that. And then, of course, that'll burn the card. We might want to add that card... or that, We might want to add that Legion to either... The quadi or the off map conflict box so let's think about that and barbarian informants if i play this card it will let me look at the top five cards of the barbarian deck and put them in any order i wish hmm i'm going to take this card i couldn't use and play for an action and what i'm going to do is well wait a minute i really don't like this i think i need to stop this this conflict. So I'm, I'm going to attack over here. I'm going to pl play this card for an attack. And it's going to be five versus five. Uh, no, actually, it's going to be six to five, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's going to be six versus five. And we hope we win. And that is a two and a one. So we do. No, we don't win. Is that a tie? Seven and. Seven. That's the tie. So let's try it again. And we rolled a one, so this comes down. Well, actually, I don't think that comes down unless the battle is resolved. Let's see, real quick. I mean, you know, it doesn't say. I think we rolled a one. I think we're going to lose effect of winning or losing a battle. Rolling a one or six. So yeah, I think this this we lose this anyway. That will come down to a two. But we roll again because it was a tie. So let's see. Let's try this again. Uh, what do we get? We get eight, and they get nine, so they won. <laughs> That's going to mean that one of these comes over to the recovery box. And so that wasn't good. Now what do I do? I am going to burn another card. And I'm going to build two forts, two level one forts, one here and one in these in the three. So the two and three territories, two level one forts. Now I'm going to. Hmm. I'm going to attack with this card. This is the um, ignore a play card. I'm going to attack with Marcus Aurelius, the uh, ISEG. So let's attack. And we are at 9, 10. Because we have a fort. And they are at 4 plus 2. They're at 6. And whatever we roll, we win. So that's going to move them back here and it's leaving me with these two cards now this forced march i still could use this to to move legions to the off map area so i could move a couple more legions over here and try this battle again another thing i could do is i could burn a card to up my imperium points I could burn both, really, and come back up to four. I may do that, because that would that would hold, that at least get me to the summer phase. 
where I could possibly take more actions here and here. I just, I don't want my Imperium points to be at two. I know what can happen. Or do I want to try another attack? Two, so it's five versus five. I'm going to, let's do it. Let's just, let's attack again here in the off-map conflict area. So it's going to be five against five and they roll a six and I roll a three. We lose again, so another Legion comes back and goes into the recovery area. Now I'm going to burn this last card to increase my Imperium points to three. That's so good. This game is not going good at all. So that was my end of my round. And that is the end of the spring round. So now we go advance the marker to summer. And the barbarians draw three cards and take their action. So one, two, three. And starting with this first card, it's the I Azigis again. Um, advance them forward or demoralize them. So this will go into the surge pile. When you have a fort, you can take a hit and stop them from advancing, or you can just ignore it and let them advance and leave your fort there. I'm going to take the hit on the fort, and that's going to hold them in place. So temporarily stopping the advance of that tribe. The next card is Marcomani. Advance the Marcomani forward one space or flip them. Well, unfortunately, they don't need to be flipped, so this comes to the search pile. They move to the sixth space. That really sucks. I had them surrender <laughs> and everything. Uh, all right, uh, and that's a surge, so unfortunately what that means is the quaddy will move again, so we'll get to move to the plus two space, and the IZGs get to move to the two space, where that level one fort is. And the surge cards now get discarded, and we play this last card. And it is the Marco Mani again, so they're going to advance yet again. They'll come down to the plus four space. And that's going to do it for the Barbarians in the summer. And then it comes to me. I get to draw three cards. One. Two. Three. So we got one action card. So we know we're going to take an action. War atrocities. On roll a 1d6. On a result of two to six, one Barbarian army of your choice is demoralized. If I roll a one, they all flip to their bold side. So that won't really matter. They're already bold. That's interesting. And then the local guides discard this card to reduce the terrain value of the barbarians by half. So that would be good because if I attack here, they would only get a plus one. Here, they would only get a plus one. Here, they would get a plus two. Of course, I can't attack the mark of money. I've got no armies in the uh, army box down here. And I still have this off-map conflicts going on and none of these cards help as far as getting uh, attack point values over here. And as we approach the end of the turn, that's going to hurt. Oh, this is not good. I've got two. So it would be three versus seven. And that's not very good odds. Could also deploy forts and try to hold, hold on until I can do something a little bit better. Could put a level two fort in here. Or I could put, I guess what I'm saying is I could put two, I could flip this to a level two, or I could put a couple of level two forts here. I think I could even, yeah, flip one level one fort to level two. So I could place two level one forts here, and then flip one of those, one of these forts to a level two. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take this action card and place two level one forts here. Actually, I'm going to place the other one here. And then I can take another action and flip this one to a level two. That might buy me some time. Wow, this, this is, I'm not in a good position at all here. This is a typical game for me. Like I said, I haven't won a game yet, and it's not looking good at all. So let's, we're going to, have to be aggressive. I don't think I can do this. I think I'm, okay, I think, I think I'm going to have to attack here. 
The, only, the question is, do I attack once here and once here? I really can't afford to attack here, though. It'd be four versus seven. I could, in theory, win, but that's not great odds. I can certainly win here. The question is, do I try to demoralize him first? I'm going to say no. We're going to attack. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use the demoralize card and use it to attack with Mark Amani. So we're going to... I mean, <laughs> not Mark Amani. Mark is Aurelius. So we've got um, nine. We have, we're at ten with the fort and these... Uh, guys are at six, and I'm going to attack and see what we get. And that's a one for them and a four for me, so I win, which is good. That pushes them back and demoralizes them, so that's good. One card left. Uh, I'm not going to use it for the effect. I can't. It wouldn't do me any good to uh, reduce terrain value because I, I don't have another card to attack with. I still have this. I don't like this either. I don't think there's much I can do. I'm going to attack. Well, I think I bought some time here though. I really need to get rid of this conflict over here. So it, it would be four to five. I'm going to try this again. It's. I've got to get rid of it. So I'm going to attack the off conflict map area again they've got five i've got four that is nine to my nine so i've got to roll again <laughs> and it, they get one i get four so um that's eight for me so okay so finally we win that this goes into the history deck which is over here I'm going to keep that separate from the Roman one so I don't have to dig through it and sort them all out later. And I believe now the legions come back to the this uh, recovery box. If I'm not mistaken, let's double check. I think that's right. Um, if we win in an off-map conflict... Add its car to the history pile and place all legions and leaders involved in the recovery box. So yeah, they're going to come back over here. So we won't see them until next year if I survive. The good news is, though, the Eastern Empire has been resolved. I won't lose any IP over that. Um, and I have no more cards, so that's the end of my round and the end of the summer. So we go forward into... The winter phase and the barbarians get to draw three more cards. So that's one, two, three. And the first one is the Marco Mani. That goes into the surge pile and the Marco Mani move down to the plus two. This isn't good at all. <laughs> this is not good. And now we go, let's see, we pull another card, Unrest in Rome. Discard one card from your hand. I have no more cards in my hand. Um, if you do not discard a card, you have to lose two IP instead. This is the card, This the very last game I played, I had exactly two IP left when I drew this card. Fortunately, here I have three, so that's going to take us down to one. But we are in a horrible position right now. We are hanging on by a bare thread. So that goes into the discard pile. The final Barbarian card is... The eye is ZG's, and they will advance, but I'm... Well, actually, they flip to their bold side because they're demoralized, so they simply flip to bold. That's a surge, though. I'm going to use the fort to stop the advancement of the Quadi. So the fort is a level one, so it gets removed. Unfortunately, I have nothing to stop the Marcomani. They're going to cross the Danube and into Pannonia Superior. That's horrible news. Oh, and I lose a, um, I guess, I think that's the game, actually. <laughs> I forgot it. Then I lose the, um, I think I lose the Imperium point immediately. And if I do, it's game over. I don't think I get a chance to try to recover that. No, I can't anyway, because I don't have any, any army there. Okay. 
Note that the other minus one IP spaces for the Markamani and Quadi only result in one IP reduction during housekeeping, not the inst Okay, so I'm still alive. I'm still barely alive. So we have... That won't come into play until we get to housekeeping, which we're almost at anyway, so... That's the Surge. So these cards go into the discard pile. And it is now my turn. I get to draw one card and one card only. That better be a good one. <laughs> and it's Harsh Winter. No Barbarian cards are drawn this round. Well, that doesn't do me any good because the Barbarians have already gone. And I can't hold the card. I've got to do something. So the only thing I can do is... I can't build forts south of the Danube. I have nothing to attack with. I can, I can't transfer anybody because I, I don't have any fleets. Prevent a surge. I can't do that. Nope. I can advance the IP marker by one. That's the only thing I can do. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take this card and use it for that action. So that's going to bring us back up to two. And that is my the end of my round. That is the end of the winter. That will take us into housekeeping. And so we do the fort attrition check. And you'll remember we roll a d6. And on a roll of six, we lose the fort. So let's start down here in the plus two area. And we roll a six. <laughs> we lose both of these forts, because remember that supply chain was just broken by losing the army in the plus two territory. There's nothing below it, so it gets removed. We remove truce markers. There are none. We flip Marcus to bold. He already is. We have no cards to discard. We lose one IP for off-map conflicts. Thank goodness we took that out of the game. Now we lose one IP per tribe south of the Danube. So we do have one south of the Danube, so this comes back down to one again. And that's it. We take this back to spring of 172 CE. And we are hanging on by a thread. Okay, so the barbarians go first. They get their three. They always get three. If we survive, we'll get five. And their first card is the Markumani again. So they advance to... They're within one of Rome now. If they advance one more time, it is game over. Um, so let's pull the second card. I hope it's not the Markumani. And it's the uh, Barbarian Siege Forts again, but we have no forts. So this is a non-event for us. That gets discarded. And the last card is the quadi so they advance south of the danube so that's really gonna really put a crimp in my plans because now we have two south of the danube <laughs> so the good news is i get to draw five cards now so one two three Four and five. So we have two action cards. Um, route. So after a battle, move a defeated army back two spaces. Well, that could come in handy. We can choose two barbarian armies and demoralize them. And that. Mm, and then winter round, make up two attacks during the winter round and do not suffer the minus one. Well, it's not winter, so that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. I don't think there is... The problem is here with the Marco Mani. I don't think there's anything I can do. I, I can't transfer without the fleets. Um, can I can build the fleets, I guess. I would have to build... I would have to build them both to get Marcus Aurelius back over here and, and some of these legions. And I think I got ahead of myself. I think I was supposed to... I don't think I did the redeploy. So we're gonna, I'm going to have to do that before I get too carried away. What I should have done was redeployed before the Barbarians went. Because remember, we had all of these forces in the recovery box. So let's do that. Let's take these out. And... 
I should have done this before the Barbarians drew their cards and moved. It's not going to affect the game that much because I, I pretty I basically would have probably done the same sort of thing anyway. Um, but I did want to bring Marcus Aurelius back over here with his army. And the one thing I'm missing on my player's aid card is I should have the sequence of play somewhere over here because it's that it's that redeployment phase I tend to forget. We definitely want Maxi Mianis over here with four. And I'm just going to put three legions over here. So right now I'm just trying to stabilize the situation if I can. Okay, so that's the way it should have looked. Because like I said, I should have, in the uh, sequence of play, I should have... If you look at the top there, if there's a redeployment step, which I didn't take, and I should have. And that basically gives you a chance to, to redeploy your forces. And that makes it a little bit better for me because, like I said, I don't have any fleets in the Danube yet to transfer after the fact. So, back to what I was going to do. We saw these action cards. It does make it a little bit easier for me, though, to decide what to do. Because now I can play this card to demoralize two armies. So I don't have to worry about shuffling troops. So let's do that. Let's demoralize two barbarian armies. And we're definitely going to do the Marcomani. So they're down to two. And we're going to demoralize the Quadi. They're down to three. And now I'm going to attack the Marcomani. So, yeah, we're going to attack. So it's going to be, I've got six, seven, eight, nine. So we're at nine. The Barbarians are at um, two and only two. They don't get anything for being in that in, in south of the Danube territory. So it's nine to two. And we roll... And uh, we get a six, which will, I think that gets another IP, which is good. Double check. There's something else that should be on my player's aid card. But uh, you play it enough, you remember anyway. I'm sure it's plus one. Yes, yeah, so we increase our IP by one. That's excellent news. That goes back up to two. They rolled a five, so no change in their status. And I'm also going to play this card now, the route um, battle after Roman victory it'll move them back two spaces instead of one so these both these cards are gone and it'll move them back one two so now they're back at the plus two space leaving me with two action cards well two Roman cards I should say one is an action card and um, this is a winner card. So really, this, this, I need to either take an action with this or, well, take an action. I can't, I can't use it for what it is. And I am tempted to, let's attack the Quadi. So I'm going to burn this card to attack the Quadi. And they are at three. We are at six. And we attack, so let's see what we get. They get a one. Uh, it won't matter because they're already demoralized. And we get a two, so we win. That will push them back to their plus two space. And it will leave me with one action card. I'm going to burn this card and build two level one forts. And I'm going to put a fort here and a level one fort here. You know, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the other level one fort here. That'll buy me time if they come down. I'm not too concerned about the Marco money because I do have Marcus Aurelius back in Rome, or at least the uh, Rome army box. And that is it. That's the end of my round, the end of the round, spring round because the barbarians have gone. And we move into the summer round. And the Barbarians will draw three cards. One, two, three. And the first one is 
bad omens. Roll to determine which barbarian army flips to its demoralized side. So there's only one that's not demoralized. It's the uh, Iazigi. So we'll see. We've got to get a five or a six to flip them to demoralized. And we get a one, so no effect. The second card is the Quadi. So they advance... Or they flip to their bold side. So they're not going to advance, they're just going to flip to their bold side. So that happens. And it creates a surge, so the Marcomani will not advance, but they'll flip to their bold side. The Iazigis will advance down to the plus two space. That's the surge. These get discarded, and we pull the final Barbarian card. Balamar. Flip the Marcomani to bold. Um, they're already bold. It says to first perform the Oathbreaker check if needed. It's not. Immediately attack them. Discard one card using any battle cards you like. They have plus two combat. Well, we don't have a card. If you can't attack, you lose, but do not discard to history. So we... I guess a battle is fault, is what they're saying. We don't win, we lose. Oh, okay, I see what they're saying. If we lose, they're going to advance one space, and we lose one IP. Oh, I think I'm reading that right. If you can't attack. I guess... I guess it's still I lose. They still advance, and I lose an IP, but this goes back into the discard pile and not the history pile. So we could see that one again. So I lose, and when you lose a battle, well, they advance, it says, right? Yep, they advance one space. They're back south of the Danube. And when we lose, we lose a Legion, so... One of these legions goes into the recovery box. And that is it for the barbarians. And now I get to draw three cards. One, two, three. Now this would have been handy early on. This is the foreign treaty card. Automatically end one off-map conflict. <laughs> And I'm tempted to hold that in the meditation slot just to keep it, or at least in my hand, because I don't want another con oh, an off-map conflict to come up. Divide and Conquer. So this is an after a barbarian card draw. I'd have to hold this to make to use of this card, and it would basically just let us switch which barbarian activates. Ordered Retreat. After a Roman defeat, it, this would let us keep a legion. So that's not too powerful here in the spring of... 172 CE. What I've got to do is I've got to get rid of these, the Marcomani. I need them back north of the Danube. All three areas now are at great risk. So I think I'm going to... Let's hold on to that card. I may use it. Who knows? But I'm going to use this Divide and Conquer card for an action, and I'm going to attack the Marco Mani again, so they're at four. I'm at, uh, now I'm at eight. Because I lost a legion. And we roll. And it looks like we rolled a one, and they rolled a two. Now one of the things I can also do is burn a card to change the one to, into a six. Which would give us another IP. And it would give us a victory here. But I've got to burn a card to do it. Now, I, I did use this card to attack with, so it's gone. Or I could burn this card to... Um, well, it wouldn't make any sense, though. I might, if I'm going to burn it to flip that, that D6, then... That would probably be the thing to do. I think I want to do that. And let me double-check the rule to make sure I get it right. I'm pretty sure it's you flip. I know I saw it somewhere. It's here. It's it's just me not finding it because I'm not. It's in the card. I'm pretty sure it's in the card section. But basically, it's if you burn a card, you can turn a. You can flip the combat value. And I don't see it. I don't see it in the rule book. A. I thought you could I thought there was a card that lets you flip the die from a one to a six or vice versa. 
Yeah, so I don't see it. I think I'm, maybe I'm thinking of an event card. I thought there was some, there was there's a time when you could change a a roll of a six or a one. I thought you could flip it. Let's look at the actions real quick. For, okay, for, for battle, you can add plus one to the attack value. So I must be thinking of an event card where it flips that one and six. So as it is, then I can I can burn a card to turn the one into a two. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. We won the battle anyway, so we won the battle. Let's just leave it as it is then. So that burned the card. That's going to push the Marco Mani back to the plus two. And that's going to leave me with one card that I was holding on to in case I lost it so that I could... Um, Avoid losing a legion, but I didn't have to do that, so I am going to I am actually going to attack the Marco Mani one more time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just attack the Marco Mani one more time. So again, well, I'm at eight. They're now at six. Risky, not quite what I want to do. I still need to get my Imperium points back up. I'm teetering on the brink of destruction and I know it. So I rolled a three, uh, that's 11. They got 10, so I won. That'll push him back up to the plus four. And I think that is going to do it for the summer turn. So, okay. We advance the round now to winter, and the barbarians will draw three cards. So one, two, three, and their first card is the Marco Mani. They are just really advancing. They will come down to the plus two territory. The card goes into the search pile. Good omens flip all barbarian armies to their bold sides. They're already there. That does no good, so that doesn't surge. That's good. And then the Plague. Lose one IP. Well, that, this isn't good. So now we're back down to one IP again. And roll 1d6. And if we roll a 1, we'll lose two legions. Otherwise, we roll 1. So we lose one legion. And I am going to take one legion from... I really don't want to take any legions away. But I'm going to take them from... Marcus Aurelius. And this gets discarded. I draw my one card because it's winter and discard this card to plus one other. So this is the other side to this Maximianus card. Another way to bring him out is I could play this card and another card to bring him out, but he's already out, so I can't really use that for its effect. I can only use this for an action. I am not going to battle anything because it's winter and I would, I'd would i be minus one to whatever I do anyway. Even though I have a couple of forts, I don't think it's worth it. So I am going to use this card to up my IP marker by one. So now we're at two. And that will take us to housekeeping. We do our fort attrition check. So we'll start over here with the rightmost fort. I roll a five, so it survives. And then the uh, quaddy fort rolls a one, so it survives. It was a uh, six and not a one, right? <laughs> I think it's, um, I think that's right. Let's just make sure. Yeah, so it's on a six, it gets removed or hit, I should say. Um, so remove truce markers, there are none. Flip Marcus Aurelius to bold. Uh, there's no cards in my hand to discard. There's no map, off map conflicts. No one is south of the Danube. So we will move the round marker back to spring and the year marker goes to 173 CE. And we go back and start over. And remember we start with the redeployment step first. So these two legions are now available for redeployment. How do I want to do this? Well, we've got 
I've got a lot of problems. This is currently at six. This is currently at six. So we're kind of even here. He's at six. We're only at three here. I, it's at least one here, possibly both over here. Um, that leaves Marcus Aurelius at seven. That's not so great. I'm going to leave it like that, though. I'm going to call that the deployment phase. We are teetering on the brink of destruction. So the Barbarians get their three cards. So one, two, three. That first card is Legions Demand Donative. So place the Mutiny Marker on any army led by Marcus Aurelius. So we take a Mutiny Marker. This is not good. It, that army cannot be activated until I discard one card from my hand and deduct one IP. Mutinous troops do not count towards pacification. Well, it just isn't really going to matter here. Do not remove this marker during housekeeping. So basically, they're mutinied until I burn a card and lose an IP. That's not good. <laughs> the second card is the Marco Mani again. So they're going to advance south of the Danube again. And this final card is... Iazigis, and they advance, but they're not going to advance because I'm going to burn my fort to prevent that, so they're still there. Unfortunately, it's a surge. Uh, that will keep the, this fort will keep the Quadi from advancing, but the Marco Mani do advance again. And that was the surge, and that was the entire Barbarian turn. It's now my turn, so I get five cards. It's like an action card, another action card. Sarmadia card, Ambush, and a Battle on the Ice. Looks like a win around card. Well, the action cards are just that. This Sarmadia card, the Iazigi's front only, placed two level two forts on eligible spaces. So we might be doing that. <laughs> and this Ambush card. Ambush card, before... Uh, battle before dice roll. Add three to the Roman battle roll. If you win, flip the barbarian, arm, barbarian army to its demoralized side and retreat at one space. So that's basically a plus three to a battle for us. And then uh, this winter round, I don't even care because it's a winter round, so I'm not going to be holding anything here. So the only one I would consider, there's only two I'm going to consider using for the action on the card, and that's the place two forts and the getting a plus three and of course the forts are only for the Iazigis. Um, let's do that. Let's place those two level two forts in, I'm going to put them in space two and three so that we can, hopefully that'll pin up the Iazigis while I can get out of this mess. So that is that card. It goes into the discard pile. And then I am going to... Oh, we still have this mutiny problem. I can't leave the Marcomani outside of Rome, though, because it's game over if they come in. So I'm going to take this action card, and I'm going to pay one IP to remove this mutiny marker. That hurts. And now I'm going to... I'm going to have to attack the... Marcomani, and I'm going to use this ambush card. So I have seven plus the three from the ambush card. I'm at ten. Marcomani are at four. And let's see what happens. We hope we win because we want to push them back and demoralize them. And I get five, they get one. So they would have been demoralized anyway, but more importantly, they retreat one space, so that's going to push them back here. Uh, they're demoralized now. This card, both these cards go into the discard pile for me. Leave me with one card. I'm going to attack again. Then I'm going to attack the Marcomani. This time they're at two. And I'm at 
seven. And I attack. I don't see any way out of this for me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see this ending good. They roll a six. Uh, they still lose, though, because I've got, they get eight, I've got um, 12. So they still lose, but the six will embolden them again. It'll push them back north of the Danube, but it will push them back to their their uh, bold side. And that burns that card. And that is the end of the summer round, or the spring round, and now we'll go into the summer round. And we go back to the Barbarians, they'll draw three cards. We are getting low on cards. And so, well, <laughs> Scandal, Faustina, lose one IP. That will usurp us right there. That is the end of the game. And that's why you don't want your IP to be so low, because one card like that comes out, game over. There you have it. So on the positive side, I did manage to go a little longer than sometimes I've done in past games. I, I've lost the game in earlier years. So I didn't do quite as bad as I normally do, but I did do bad. <laughs> And if I, you know, I had the Marco Mani surrendered, if I could have reinforced that and held on to it, it I would have stood a lot better chance at, at winning the game. Um, but I didn't, and so I lose again. I've yet to win this game. So there you go. This is the Wars of Marcus Aurelius. It is a solitaire-only game, and it's a, I, this game is awesome. I'm going to put it up on the same level as something like Don't Tread on Me. I like the fact that the rules are simple and light. The rule book is well written. You can understand the rules. It's, for the most part, easy to find things here. You saw me flipping, but that was more on me than the rule book. Very little looking up rules for this game. It's, it's, they're very straightforward. It's kind of neat also in that if you look in the rule book, uh, once you get past the rules, you get into these. Uh, the cards are numbered. So you would look at a card, like for instance, we drew this uh, Scandal Faustina card. If you look at the number, you can look in the back of the rule book at the supplemental section, and there's some history there. And every every um, card that has a number uh, has some history information that kind of explains where this came from. So again, a good lot of kudos to you know learning some history from playing this game. That's that's really neat. Um, I like that it's fast playing. Um, normally, once you learn the rules, you don't have to stop and look them up. It's easy once you get the rules in your head. The game really flows smooth. There's painful choices you have to make, and this is one of my. If I'm playing a solitaire only game, one of the things I look for is do you have to really think about what you're going to do? And for this game, it's it's an absolute yes. You have to think about do I want to increase my Imperium points? Do I want to attack? Do I want to hold a card? Try to do something later. A lot of thought about what to do. Replayability, uh, every game is different. Uh, the high replayability, you can play this game over and over and, and not have the same game occur twice. At least I haven't seen that happen yet. And I don't I don't think it would. I think it'd be very difficult to have a game. I have yet to see a game played. And I've only played, like I said, six or seven at this point. I haven't seen any two games look identical. Well, other than I've lost. <laughs> That's the only, the only common thread is I've lost every single one. Uh, what else can I say about this game? Uh, go buy it. Yeah, it's it's. If you like solitaire games, this is a good one to to uh, to buy. It's it's Holland Spiel. Go to their website. Fantastic stuff. The, the components are quality. It's it's a uh, it's printed on the uh, wooden like. This is the Blue Panther printing. Um, they do a good job of printing their stuff. The cards are the good. The map is good for what it is. Um, it's a very portable game. You could grab this thing and take it anywhere. Not a lot. You're looking at the entire game here. There's nothing else. There, there's some more counters, but actually, I don't think there are any more counters. I think I've got them all out. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a it travels easy is what I'm trying to say. Just a fun game. Fun, fun game. So there you go. I don't know uh, if you. It, it was a fairly quick game. If you'd like to see me play this one again, let me know in the notes, comments down below, and I'll certainly try to get it back into the rotation. On production notes, this I've changed the microphone, I have changed the camera, and I've got some better lighting in here now, I think. I'm constantly trying to improve the production values. I've thought about maybe at some point doing a Patreon. Maybe I will. I don't know. It, it might be a way of getting some more uh, funding to do 
some upgrades with my equipment or maybe even getting some more uh, board games in the rotation. I'm not worried about that right now. I've got a lot of games in the pipeline uh, coming up. I don't know what's next. You'll have to turn, tune back in to see. Don't know if it'll be another solitaire game or if I'm going to get to a larger war game where I play multiple sides. We'll see. I don't know. I'll have to come back and look. So that is it for now. I'm going to end it here. I'm glad to be back with uh, another video and hope you come back to see the next one.